Today my guest is Sean Cronks. He's an amazing person, so humble, so motivated, and I can't wait for you guys to meet him. So Sean in 2007 stumbled on YouTube. He created one of the very first health video channels and in 2008 he created a podcast called underground wellness radio where he interviewed different authors and experts in the alternative health space had over 10 million downloads today sean is the host of the quote of the day show podcast an unbelievably motivated and powerful podcast that blends the vintage works of older writers like Napoleon Hill and comes them in and puts them in on a podcast. It's one of my favorite podcasts, guys. It's a morning must. I'd highly recommend it. And he's also the co-founder of something called the Jerf Bar, which is a vegan, non-GMO, completely sustainable health food bar that I think is going to change the world. Sean and I get into a wide variety of topics like, um, you know, his upbringing, how he got into video editing, as well as, you know, kind of what he's doing now and what he's focusing on is kind of reprogramming the negative financial mindset that a lot of people in America and around the world have. I definitely suffer from this at one point in my life. And Sean Cronkston is definitely the person to talk to. I cannot wait for you guys to hear this. Enjoy. You're listening to the Humans 2.0 Podcast, a daily show centered around developing yourself as an individual in the greatest yet most confusing time in human history, hosted by Mark Metry. I'm a 21-year-old human being who created this podcast out of my own misery in an attempt to find answers and connect with the greatest minds on planet Earth and understand their mindset, beliefs, stories, and internal narratives for you to find and develop your own thoughts, perspectives, and paradigms. Take the journey. I'll see you on the other side. Sean, how do you spend your time here on planet Earth? I spend my time educating myself and educating others. I spend my time reading a ton. I'm a big reader. Um, this probably isn't a video podcast, but right behind me, there's probably a few hundred books on my bookshelf. So I spend lots of time reading, um, lots of time listening to motivational and personal development talks and wondering, hey, what can I do to use this information to share it with others so they can be inspired and uh, live a life that they want to live? Amazing. Sean, I'm a big fan of, um, you know, all the people that you've interviewed on your journey. And, you know, I know that your roots run deep. So I want to take a moment here. And if it's okay with you, um, you know, I want to know why did you start to, to do this, you know, especially your, you know, your childhood, what was your upbringing? The reason why I ask is I heard on a podcast, something that you mentioned, uh, about video editing and why you liked doing that based on the way that you grew up, if that makes any sense. Yeah, um, my first exposure to video editing was when I was in college and I worked at the media center, which was in the basement of the library at, at uh, San Diego State University. And my buddy John and I decided to make um, kind of like a highlight reel of Roy Jones, and we who was a boxer, and another one of a lot of like basketball dunks and whatnot. And, and from there, I was I was pretty hooked. And I found video editing just to be something that allowed me to use my creativity, you know, to get an image of my head in my head of what I wanted to do and actually just sit down and get it going. And so, you know, as I it's funny, like looking back on my life and my experiences kind of all led me to, you know, doing what I do now, you know, for a long time, it was doing YouTube videos, which required those editing skills, um, doing online summits. Um, I was able to even though we had a director there, I was like the co-director and kind of had again in my my mind, how I wanted things to be edited, how I wanted things to look. And so um, it's just funny how life kind of gives you these experiences. So later on in life, you can use them and put them all together and just, you know, bang it out and help some people. Absolutely. And as a guy that's worn a lot of hats, um, you know, 
the way that you know you've you've approached you know your your career is very interesting and i want to know you know how do you know when to necessarily change when you're doing how do you go about that with your decision making process and the you know the various projects that that you do well, yeah, I mean, I got started in the health space uh, back in 2007 with Underground Wellness. And I started with, you know, doing video, which I, which I totally love to do. And then I started doing podcasting and blogging and creating online summits. And um, now I'm in the personal development space. And a lot of people, when I decided to get out of the health space, thought I was crazy. It was a multi-million dollar business, had 230,000 people on the email list, like I was crushing it. But for me, it's that that desire it's that passion when that starts to go away from me i know that it's time to go um even looking at the books that i was reading for a very long time in my life every book that i read was about health and functional medicine and things of that sort but as i moved along my path i started to find that i was reading more uh, personal development books and books about business and marketing and that's what i really love to do and those are the people who i wanted to connect with when i say people authors and experts i mean um that's who i really wanted to connect with and share their messages with more people so again for me it's not um it's not so much the voice in my head because for a lot of us that voice in our head isn't really true you know, but for me, it's just kind of like that gut feeling, you know, if I'm not waking up in the morning, super excited about what I'm about to do that day. Um, I think that that's kind of like a nudge from the universe that this is, isn't where you're supposed to be. And, you know, one of my favorite quotes from my friend Lisa Nichols is that passions have seasons. And for me, my passion for health and wellness, like in the way that I was doing it back then was just up. It was seven years. It was time to go. And so I'm glad I made that change. I couldn't imagine still being in the health space right now, three years later after having that, those feelings. And so I'm happy I've made this move and I'm, I'm feeling, feeling really good about life and my career and where it's going. Amazing. Amazing. And, you know, Sean, you know, out of all of the, you know, the people that you've interviewed and all the things that you've learned, um, you know, I would say it's still in the same theme, right? Like you're in the health space and that's more of physical wellness, which also ties into, you know, personal and self-development. But ultimately, you know, I think it's, it, it encompasses a larger part of it. And I think you're just, you know, you were moving on, you're going to the, the next stage, so to speak. Um, and, you know, what, what have you learned um, from hopping into the, the self-development field? Because I would imagine um, some of the things that you've learned, you know, through your health journey overlap a lot with your self-development. What have I learned? Oh, I I've learned a lot. Um, some of the stuff I already knew, but I've learned a lot about why we sabotage ourselves. Um, because, I mean, that, that's what you deal with very often in the health space. Um, you know, I believe that a lot of people that I worked with um, had a lower level of consciousness, you know, had a really lower level of awareness. They weren't feeling really good about themselves. They were typically, you know, stuck in guilt and shame. They were vibrating at a very, very low level and at a level that made them feel sick. And a lot of clients that I had that I worked with, the ones who got better, the fastest were the ones with the best attitudes you know the ones who would set goals the ones who are positive you know above negativity and can just like really put their mind to something and make it go and i felt like in the health space of course you know as health practitioners we can't be experts on everything in the world but i feel like one of the big missing pieces is that mindset piece and that's why people were going from practitioner to practitioner to practitioner and not getting any results because nobody was really helping them with the mind and so um i think that's you know, there's again there's a lot of stuff that i've learned whether it be like our belief systems and our value systems and how to set goals and what all those things have to do with each other um but yeah i just i just i, I think positive thinking goes a long way of course we're not always going to think positively but but really swinging that that spotlight in our brains our spotlights in our minds to more positive aspects of our, of our lives and finding that silver lining in every single thing that happens to us um, really goes a long way and it really just helps to to shape to reshape our consciousness and to make us feel better about ourselves because i think that that's what life is really all about is just feeling good when you're feeling good you're vibrating at a higher level you're attracting really good stuff to you you're healing your body and everything just tends to flow and that doesn't mean there's not going to be ups and downs 
downs, but we tend to get better or get through the downs a lot better, a lot quicker, um, acknowledging the lessons and the downs, if we can really like swing that spotlight and just focus on the good and feel better about ourselves. Very well said. And a big part of it, I think, is what you mentioned, you know, raising your conscious awareness, because when you do that, you start to realize, examine, you know, what's working under the hood, you start to see, you know, what your quote unquote mindset is about certain things, which ultimately dictate your belief system, which control your actions throughout the day, really. And, you know, Sean, I've, I've been taking a look at your work and you know, a big topic that you're focusing on and for good reason, I think, because I think a lot of people struggle with this is their, you know, the mental relationship, the mindset that they have with money. And, yeah. you know, listening to your story, it was interesting to see how you got out of it. I'd love it if you could tell our listeners here just a little bit about that. Yeah, man. You know, I, I, I've i always been an entrepreneur to some extent. I remember I used to sell stuff at the swap meet. You know, I'd go out there with my dad and sell stuff and I would go out there with my grandpa and sell stuff. And I just, I always had something going on, on the side. When I was in college, I used to sell, um, I'm not sure if the statutes of, statute of limitations is up, but there was an artist who passed away when I was in college and I found some of his um his cds like unreleased tracks and i used to sell them i used to like make playlists and like burn cds and i used to sell them in mass volume at sdsu at, at, in school so i was always like selling stuff and then or making money but then when i got out of school and i decided to become an online entrepreneur at some point and i had big expectations for myself i couldn't attract the money into my life the way that i thought i should have been able to i mean i had Gosh, back in 2008, when I really made a change, probably 30, 40,000 subscribers on YouTube, like people were hanging on my every word, but I wasn't really monetizing it. And even when certain options would come up, like people would be like, hey, let's work on this program. Let's create this ebook. Let's get this membership site going. I'd be like, no, I don't, I don't want to do that because I don't want to ask people for money. And for some reason that just really got locked in my head. And I remember talking to my buddy Antonio about this on the phone and he was like, hey, man, I want you to check this out. I'm gonna send you this interview. And so he sent me this interview and it was with Dr. John D. Martini, who a lot of you may know from The Secret. And he was talking about values. And what it made me realize was that in the grand scheme of things, I didn't really have a high value on earning and saving and investing money. You know, I had a high value on my health, I had a high value on my fitness, I had a high value on reading and learning, I had a high value on social stuff. I used to go out all the time back then. I lived in downtown San Diego. Um, I had a high value on teaching, all of these other things. But when you really looked at the ladder or the hierarchy of my values, you know, making money was like number 10 or 11. And as Dr. Martini says, if, you know, earning, saving and investing money isn't in your top five values, then there's a really good chance that you're never going to be able to get ahead financially. And so I really had to do some work to move my values or my value for money up that ladder. And then number two was I had to come to the realization that all of us, or I shouldn't say all of us, I hate to make blanket statements, but a lot of us who don't grow up financially well, um, tend to grow up in this us versus them mentality. And actually, it's kind of like natural for human beings to do it, do this. It's kind of like how we've survived, you know, back in the day as tribes, the way that we survived was to know who we were and who we were not and to understand who they were. That's how we protected ourselves. And so for a lot of us, we get stuck in this us versus them mentality. We are who we are. We are the good. We are those who don't have any money as if it's some type of virtue. And they are the ones who have the money. They're evil. They're greedy. They don't want anything to do with us. They're cheaters on and on and on. A lot of us grew up that way. And not only did was this like pushed into our minds as, as young people when we really didn't have a chance of whether or not to accept or reject it. We had no choice in that matter, but it's been confirmed over and over and over again. When we look at a lot of religion, when we look at a lot of what goes on in the media, it's just confirmed over and over and over again. And so what happens is we grow up with these beliefs that money is bad. Money will make me them. And that was almost the subconscious obstacle that I was dealing with in my entrepreneurial journey. I knew 
deep down subconsciously that if I started making money as an entrepreneur, I would become one of them. And when you're one of them, you're no longer one of us. And when you're no longer one of us, you use that, you lose that safety of your tribe. And now you're on out in the world all on your own doing your thing, but it's very, very scary. And there's a lot of unknown there. And so I think for a lot of people, you know, the, the, the number two, or the two blockers, and there's many blockers, and I go over these in my Money Mind Academy course, are your values. You're just not really valuing money highly enough. And number two is the us versus them mentality that a lot of us are raised with. Yeah, absolutely. For sure. And I know, you know, growing up myself, I definitely, you know, face that without even being conscious of it. And that's really why I think it's really important to talk about this. You know, Sean, just, just real quick, I want everybody to understand that we have a choice of how we are going to be when we generate more money in our lives. We don't have to be greedy. We don't have to steal. We don't have to be any of the characteristics that we associate with the them. We have a choice to do really good things with our money. We have a choice to go out into the world and serve in a really big way in order to earn money. We have the choice to contribute to really good causes. We can do all of those things just because we grew up of a, with a mentality about the characteristics of people with money doesn't mean that we have to be that way. That's our choice. Our greatest power that we have is our power to choose in any situation. But one thing that we do to ourselves is that we limit our options. We only have one choice, it seems. No, you have so many choices. You just have to open your eyes and understand that they're there. Absolutely. And I think one of the most you know, misunderstood quotes or the misquoted quote of all time is the root of all evil is money. But the reality of fact is the real saying is the, love. the root of all evil is, lo- is the love of money. Yeah, excuse me. Yeah, and, and another one, you know, from the same place is um, a rich man has, a, I forget the exact quote, but the rich man has a greater chance of getting into heaven than a, um, mm. uh, the, with the one with the camel going through the eye of a needle. You know, oh, yeah, that, yeah, yeah. That it's one? here for uh, for like a poor person to go in, then a camel go in the eye of a needle, like into heaven. Yeah. And know. people really, people really think that the Bible is referring to like a sewing needle, like the, mm. the eye of us. That's not what it means. If you go onto the Google and you type in eye of the needle, you'll actually find out what it really means or what it really is. Back in the day, in biblical times, the cities were surrounded by walls to um, avoid like a sudden stampede of invaders to come into the city. And so in order to get into the city, you had to go through this very narrow passage, which was you can walk through, of course. So you had to go through this very narrow passage to get in. They called that the eye of the needle. So it's not the sewing needle. It's just the little small passageway to get into the city. And most people don't understand that. A lot of preachers don't understand this, unfortunately. And they're just teaching their their followers, their clergy, like, hey, if you ever get rich, you're never going to go to heaven. Like, no, that's not what it means. You know, what it means is that if you're going to go into the city and go through this eye of the needle, the rich man or the rich woman has to lay down all of their goods. You can't take it all in there with you. And that's the thing is Denzel Washington says, you know, you can't um, you can't take a U-Haul to heaven. I think it might be his quote there. I'm supposed to be a lot better with quotes. I can't remember quotes today. <laughs> but, you know what I'm saying? Quote of the day show. But, you know, you can't take it all with you. You have to not be attached to all of the things that you have. Yes, enjoy it. I mean, that's what the Bible says. I am come so that you may live abundantly. But we make this choice for some reason to be poor. And I don't quite actually, I shouldn't say I don't understand it because I was there at some point. But we have to understand that we have a choice like we were put here to live abundantly. If you believe in God, I cannot personally believe in a God who sent me here to be poor and to barely get by. I would rather choose to live abundantly. And as I serve and as I get, it allows me to give more to the people who need it. Absolutely. For sure. That was very well said. And Sean, you know, somebody who has a podcast and, you know, you're studying all these people that some of them are alive now, some of them are not alive. And, you know, I just got to acknowledge you for that because I think, you know, you're taking information, whether it's in the form, it was originally in the form of somebody's mind, an amazing person's mind. 
then it gets put down into a book and you know some people in 2018 they don't read books they don't read articles they don't do this but you know you you know offering that wisdom in a new age way is uh is amazing so i gotta thank you for that for sure thank you i appreciate that yeah and you know i want to know um out of studying all these people uh, i know you probably hate this question i'm sure you get it all the time like who's your favorite who do you learn the most from but you know who have been some of your personal favorites and what have you taken away from them personal favorites well, well first of all like the, the the guy who really got this started um in a big way would be bob proctor and what i learned from bob proctor is this about the subconscious mind like how to reprogram your subconscious mind like why that why do we do the things we do and why do we not do the things that we really want to do and i highly recommend anybody go online punch in bob proctor subconscious mind and watch his videos about that um number two would be um lisa nichols you know for no particular reason other than she's just so inspiring every time i listen to lisa i just i walk away you know vibrating on a higher level um wayne dyer i would say is my favorite speaker of all time um that guy was just ah, he was just so prolific he, he created so much content while it was while he was here and i love learning about his journey you know he started as um kind of more along the psychological like he was a doctor he was a doctor of uh, psychology and so he kind of started with maslow's hierarchy of needs and kind of moved away from that and over his lifespan got more and more and more spiritual like understanding that how to get in touch with your god consciousness how to really not not so much shut down the ego but make the choice to not live from an ego perspective and to become more in tune with the spiritual side of yourself and he did it in such a way you know where people can actually understand what he was saying and he can make you laugh as well and he had such a beautiful voice and a beautiful vibe and you know it's one of my regrets is that I never had Wayne Dyer on the podcast. And I wish I would have known about his work a, a lot sooner before he passed away in 2015, but I would have loved to have the chance to pick Wayne Dyer's brain for an hour and an hour and a half. And so um, I highly recommend that everybody go out there and just listen to any, any Wayne Dyer material that you can. There's so much stuff on YouTube. And of course, he's on the quote of the day show all the time. That's amazing. And that really would be awesome. So, you know, Sean, as a seasoned podcaster, media, you know, interviewer, what would you say to those in the audience that have podcasts, they interview, what have you found over the years to be some good keys that, you know, you really hold on to during the process? Um, number one, listen to Howard Stern. Howard Stern is the greatest interviewer of all time. And a lot of people are surprised when they hear that, hear that they think, oh, because they might not have serious radio and may not have heard him in the last 10 years because he's not on regular um, terrestrial radio anymore. Um, yes, the show is still kind of raunchy at times, um, but the interviews very seldom are. They are really deep interviews. And what I've learned from Howard is that the interview isn't so much about the movie or the new album or the new Netflix special that his guest is, is there to promote. The interview is about the person. What has that person been through? And he really starts chronologically. He starts at the beginning of that person's life and just kind of follows them through. What were the highs? What were the lows? And he just the questions that he asked are kind of, he kind of starts on a surface level and then he kind of peels away layers to get deeper. You know, it's kind of sounds like a therapy session. And so, you know, that's something that I really pride myself on doing is doing all of the research. Of course, Howard probably doesn't do his own research. He has a research staff. But when I was doing interviews and I haven't really done interviews consistently for about a year now, I would immerse myself in the background of the person whom I'm interviewing, like really go deep, read all of their books, read articles about them, um, find out what their childhood was like, like really go deep and ask questions that nobody else asked you know I'm, gosh I almost made bob proctor cry on my podcast um i had nicole lappin crying through the whole thing it was like a therapy session and not that i take any pride in people crying at all but at the same time it's kind of like that barbara walters moment where you allow somebody to show more of themselves a more vulnerable side of themselves and so that the end result of the show 
is not that I'm trying to get somebody to buy the book. I'm getting the audience to be to feel like they know, like, and trust the person whom I'm interviewing. And if I can do that, I feel like I've done my job. Absolutely. And when you do that, then anything they say is much more perceptive. You know, it's not, it moves beyond the regular realm of information and actually becomes, you know, tangible, understandable information. It's a story. Everybody loves stories. Hmm. And if you're, and if your podcast is just, you know, I've been interviewed by a few people in my day. And a lot of times it's like really, really vanilla questions. And the podcaster, the host, doesn't really listen to the answers. It's like one question that I'll answer it, and then the next question that has nothing to do with the first question. So I kind of, I like the interview to flow or to have transitions when I'm getting ready to, you know, go to another topic. And so, um, yeah, if you want to be great at, every, at anything, you have to dedicate yourself to it. And there's so many podcasts out there. Um, a, lot of, a lot of people are doing podcasts in a vanilla way, I assume. You want to do what other people aren't doing. You want to study great interviewers. You want to become a great interviewer if that's what you're going to do. And people notice the quality and they will sit there and stare at their phones and wait for your next episode to upload when they really, really like the way you do things. Very well said. Sean, where can our listeners go to learn more about yourself and if they can reach out? I am on SeanCroxton.com. Uh, I'm on Facebook, but I never use that thing anymore, to be honest. Um, I'm on Instagram as well. I don't really use it much, but I keep saying I'm going to start using it more. And so um, look out for that soon. Uh, my podcast is called The Quote of the Day Show. It's on iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, and probably a whole bunch of other players that I haven't heard of. But of course, you can find that at Sean Croxton as well. And while you're there, pick up my free ebook, The Money Mind Reset, Five Steps to Changing Your Relationship with Money. Awesome. Fantastic. Sean, final thing, I promise. At the very end of the podcast, I'd like to ask my guests to leave the audience with a self-inquisitive question. You know, I think questions are really powerful tools and uh, it'd be very much appreciated, Sean, if you could leave one. It is said that when you arrived on this earth, you were assigned some work, your life's work. What is that work? What were you put here for? I think that's the question that I think that if we can answer that question, and usually it's right in front of our faces, we're just afraid to admit, you know, that the answer may not be something that is approved of by others. But when we can answer that question, I think your complete, your life completely changes because you found your dharma, you found your life purpose, you found your work, and now you can go live it out. Extremely powerful question. Sean Croxton, thank you so much for coming on the Humans 2.0 podcast. Thank you on our there for listening. This has been your host, Mark Smith. Damn, you made it till the end of the podcast. That's really rare in the age of digital distraction. This really means the world to me. I really hope you enjoyed it. Feel free to hop on over to my website, Mark Metry or message me on social media. I'm on Instagram, I'm on LinkedIn, I'm on Twitter. My name is Mark Metry, M-A-R-K-M-E-T-R-Y. I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to hear what you learned in this episode and I'll be sure to get in touch with you. And if you really, really love the podcast, I'd highly appreciate it if you went on iTunes right now and left me a review. It helps way more than you know. Let's get this Humans 2.0 grassroots movement going. Woo! Get out there and do something impactful today.